Look, I really like the mini Splatling, but I almost never use it in ranked, and that's simply because, as good as it is, there are other weapons that do what it can do, but better. It doesn't have the range to justify having to charge before shooting, and it's also difficult to counterattack if you get flanked or surprised because you always have to charge before shooting. It is a fast charge time, but it does make a big difference. Being unsubmerged in the ink before shooting makes it more difficult to dodge. Why didn't you dodge? You have to play more aggressively than a heavy splatling does, but can't play as aggressively as, say, a Tenetek or an Enzap would, while also playing support which puts the mini splatling in this weird niche between those two categories that doesn't actually benefit its user. If you want to play aggressively, use the NZAP or Tenetech. They have slightly less range for more adaptability. If you want to have the minis range and get a lot of kills, use the Splattershot Pro. If you want to use a 4-shot kill weapon with this amount of range and a lot of mobility, use the Dually Squelchers. If you want to use a weapon that has a lot of output in exchange for charge time, Although the Heavy Splatling has a lot more utility when it comes to team composition that is tough to fill for the Mini. Also, the Zinc Mini Splatling is not as good as it was in Splatoon 1. The Zimmy was top tier in the first game, but that's largely due to the utility of its sub and special. In this game, however, the kits aren't bad, they're just... fine? We're fine. We're all fine here now. Thank you. How are you? Due to its mobility and high output per each charge, the Mini is ridiculously good at covering turf and by extension, charging a special quickly. At the beginning of a match with only one main a special charge, you can easily fully charge your special in 10 seconds. This can be useful for covering the zone quickly or consistently using your special to rain down ink from the sky on your enemies. While it may have less range than the Heavy Splatling, you're also a lightweight weapon. And sometimes, on certain maps and in certain situations, trading power and firepower for speed and agility can be a good thing. Think of it like this. Snipers are like the stationary guardians, Heavy Splatling is like the walking guardians, and the Mini Splatling is like the Mini Guardians inside the shrines. But like, uh, the major test of strength ones. Those guys were pretty tough, so you wanna... you wanna be like that. To be successful with the Mini Splatling, you have to be better at Splatoon shooting fundamentals than if you're using most other similar range weapons. You have to keep short range foes at the edge of your range, you have to be a master at tracking your opponent's movements and strafing in one direction while aiming and shooting in another, you have to know when to advance on your opponents and when to retreat, and part of that is always being aware of your ink tank levels and when to refill. With the Mini Splatling, stealth isn't really an option, since you're going to have to unsubmerge and charge at least a little bit before you fire. So instead, you want your opponents to perceive you as constantly moving unpredictably and as often as possible, shooting out a constant stream of fluid. When playing this weapon, always remember, uh, facts. Uh, fool, always be extreme with your running around. It's difficult for your opponents to approach you head on if they're constantly being hosed down. So, do that. If they are able to get up close when you're in between charges or refilling, don't hesitate to not fully charge, then shoot. It only takes 4 shots to get a kill, which is about a quarter of the first charge, which is pretty quick. Everyone always underestimates how much firepower the mini splatling has, so use that to your advantage and let your enemies come to you. Also, don't forget you can cancel your charge or discharge by either going into squid form or tossing out a sub weapon. With the Model 1 mini splatling, Burst Bombs can help you out if you're in a jam and need some emergency ink resistance, or if only two or three of your mini shots land and you need to finish someone off, you can toss a Burst Bomb at them. Ten Missiles still get a pretty bad rep, but they can be useful in locating your opponent's position. At the start of a match, since your special charges so quickly, you can use missiles early to identify which positions your opponents are taking. And if your target is pretty close, combining Burst Bombs and Ten Missiles can be used to get a quick pick. 
with the Zordon Mini Spatling, best Winter Olympic sport bombs are good for quick movement around the map to reposition to a better vantage point, making a quick retreat if you overextend, like I do, or rushing to mid at the start of a match. Curling bombs can let you move faster than charging and shooting would at the expense of some turf coverage, however that's what you have Inkstorm for. In my How To Splattershot Pro video, I may have said that 10 missiles are better than Inkstorm compared to other shooters. And lastly, there isn't much reason to use the Vanel Splattershot Pro over the Dually Squelchers. The two have the exact same range, same sub, Squelchers have an arguably better special, an arguably better special, an arguably better special. However, after multiple buffs and nerfs, and more Splatoon 2 special weapon experience, I'd much prefer Inkstorm to Tenor Missiles, although I do really like both. Maybe it was my Splatoon 1 Echo Locator bias, since that was the special I used the most, and Tenor Missiles are the closest things to it. Inkstorm is great! It hinders the opponent's movements, which can aid you in making offensive pushes and halting the other team's offensive push, or just serve as a great GET THE FUCK OUT OF HERE to statue players like Heavy Splatlings and Snipers. When selecting which mini Splatling to use, I think it really comes down to experience level with the mini. I always think of the original mini as the Training Wheels mini, since if you can't land all four shots or can't always stay out of enemy ink, you have burst bombs, but once you have more experience with the mini, Curling bombs can help the zinc move around and adapt so much better, and Inkstorm is generally more of a playmaker than Tenna Missiles. And apparently, curling bombs can also do this. Use any gear abilities you want, but in my experience, the two big ones you'll definitely want since they play to the mini splatling strengths are run speed and special charge. You're lighter on your feet, so run speed will make you even lighter, and you can charge special fast, so special charge will make it even faster. I've seen many people often run 2-3 to three mains at run speed with this weapon, and I don't blame them. If you're like me, and you don't believe in your teammates' abilities to stay alive for longer than 5 goddamn seconds, then tenacity is good too. Ink recovery can also be good, since if you're low on ink and need to let out a quick charge, it'll let you pop in and out of the ink real fast to let out another one. Some sub saver is good for both, since both subs complement the mini well in different ways, and some main saver is good for letting out a constant stream of ink. Also, specifically for the zinc, running some special saver in splat zones can be good, since after you die, it's likely that the other team will take the zone, so throwing up an ink storm can help take it back quickly. And thanks for watching! I recommend at least trying this weapon out a little bit, now here's a montage from, I don't know, one of the Splatfests.
A sniper can't get kills. Is this ranked battle? Death from above. Is this Tena missiles? Fire everywhere. Is this my mixtape? <laughs>